the three obstacles in learning to code. That's what this video is all about today. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. A lot of great content in here. Let's jump right into it. We are going to be covering the three obstacles, which are going to be debugging, networking, and then the imposter syndrome. So buckle in, get ready. I'll make sure you have some actual items to take by the end of this. I want to start this off with a story, though. And this story, well, it goes like this. You know, for many years now, well, it's not even that big of a story, but for many years, I've been getting calls uh, to come save people on their last life, well, what would you say, lifeline, when they're learning to code, generally in a boot camp, or even if they're trying to do it on their own outside of a boot camp, I get called in all the time for like, I'm going to give up, help me, because I don't know what to do. And generally at this point when they reach out, I was thinking the other day, like, well, what is that commonality? Like, what are these obstacles everyone's hitting that makes them reach out? And that's exactly where this video came from because the three biggest commonalities that they all faced through all these calls I've done is debugging, the networking, and the imposter syndrome. And it's just interesting that that came up. So let's jump into that now. Before we get to the content, I want to say, though, if you're feeling stuck and you feel like you're in your last lifeline learning to code, I want to encourage you to reach out because I've created a product called the Coding Career Fastlane to help you accelerate your career wherever you're at in the process, whether you're in a boot camp or you're doing it on your own or you're in your career, reach out if you would like some help with that. I'll leave a link down below. But let's get into the content. So debugging, first and foremost, why is this? a big obstacle when learning to code. Well, every time you write any bit of code, there's generally bugs, there's generally errors. And what you have to do is you have to debug. But where people fail the most in learning to code, why this is such a big obstacle is they let their frustration get the best of them. They don't have a good debugging process. They don't, uh, they don't keep their motivation because once they hit a wall and they don't know how to get around that wall, the motivation drops very quickly. And it goes from, yeah, I'm going to spend all night doing this to, well, I should go to bed early or I should move on to something else or you procrastinate and other things pop up. But when you don't have your debugging right, it causes a, it causes a whole lot of feelings. It causes a whole lot of problems. And then at the end of the day, we don't know what to do. And this is probably the number one reason why I get calls. So because debugging is a big problem, there's a you want to build a process with debugging. And that's what I want you to do now. I want to talk you through, I think I have about eight different options for you to try out the next time you get stuck. And it's all about a process you put together. Figuring out out of these eight things I'm going to say, what worked for you. Now, let's jump into it. So when you get stuck next time, I want to make this very, very clear. You follow this one. I have an old video on it. It's called the 30 minute rule. You spend no more than 30 minutes in the weeds. If you get stuck and can't figure anything out, you are absolutely dead in the water. Spend no more than 30 minutes and then ask for help or move on to the next step of your process. Now that's the first thing to do. And I'm going to keep going here. I won't try to spend too long on each, but the second thing you should do in the debugging process that People sometimes don't want to put themselves out there, but I'm telling you right now, if you're in this spot and you're feeling stuck, you have to put yourself out there. There's no other way around this. Second thing, put a question on Stack Overflow. As dumb as you might feel or as dumb as it may sound, put your question out there because that's how you learn. You either fail by a dumb question or you fail and someone gives you the answer or helps you in the right direction of the answer. So that's number two. Another thing you could add to your debugging process is tutorials. Look specifically for tutorials. Say if you're trying to learn a bit about jQuery and how to hide and uh, display and hide elements back and forth on button clicks, look for tutorials on this. That's a great way that, like literally when you're doing Google searches, search with tutorials, JavaScript, jQuery, show and hide tutorials. Don't forget about tutorials. It's, it's interesting that when people are going through boot camps, they rely on the curriculum so much they don't think about the tutorials. And this goes to the point number four here for you to try something else, YouTube as well. We also forget about YouTube and how there are lots of channels, much like my own, to put content out there that have a bunch of free resources for you to use. So don't forget about them. The curriculum wherever you're at is not the end all be all. 
whatever documentation you're looking at might not be the end all be all. Make sure you're looking in these places. All right, now the fifth thing to do in your debugging process is to reach out to your peers. And this goes back to even if you're gonna feel stupid or even if you feel like you should know the answer, ask because fail, you have to fail to learn. If you haven't learned yet, it means you haven't failed yet. So you need to fail. But seriously, ask your peers. Now I know with this one, there are not always peers, but if you are in a boot camp, you have peers, you have Slack groups probably. If you're in a company, more than five people, you probably have peers to reach out to. Don't be afraid to reach out to them. Now the sixth one, mentors, coaches, or your boss, reach out to them. Now, I understand with this one as well too, you might not have mentors, you might not have coaches, and but you probably have a boss or you have someone you're taking direction from. That happens. Now, these next two are when you really get stuck and you need the extra help and you, none of those things before we talked about work. Number seven, Udemy. Go look at Udemy courses to see if you can learn something from somebody that's already taught about what you're looking to learn. And last but not least, number eight, look at CodeMentor.io. Go see if you can find someone that you can pay 30, 40, 50 bucks to answer your question in 10 minutes or 30 minutes, whatever you need. Now, what I kind of gave you there is a process you can legitimately follow of 30 minutes, okay, nope, stack overflow, yep, tutorials, yep, YouTube, yep, then keep going down the line. When something doesn't work, go to the next one. Now, I encourage you to add your own, but seriously, write that down. Know how to get around the obstacle of debugging. It's a big thing. It's a very big deal when you can solve any issue, any error you run into in the world by having your own debugging process. And if you haven't built one out, I encourage you to do it. It's a big obstacle that you are going to run into at some point. The second thing, the second big obstacle people run into is... It looks like this thing froze. Well, we're gonna try it. We'll keep going. Um, the second thing is, if I can get back to my screen here, the network. Networking. Well, why are is a network a obstacle for people? Well, when you're learning, I always like to think about it like you are only as strong of a developer as your network. Now you become a really strong developer, but when you hit that ceiling, you can't get any better. I can generally point to your network and tell you why. Now, if you're in a boot camp, that changes because you have a network to use. But if you're not, you're outside of it, you need to grow one. Even then in a the boot camp, you need to grow one. But this is kind of what it feels like. It's especially when I tell people this, I go, Well, how am I supposed to have a network? I just started. Or I also get this, you know, I don't know where to look or what to do. Let's talk about what to do. First things first, look at your Eventbrite for your area or meetups. There are a ton of things always going on, especially on meetups for tech groups right now. They're very, very popular. That's the first thing, look there. That's probably also the easiest. Second thing, local groups. Local groups are absolutely uh, crucial, especially like I know a couple of my students, there's some big local uh, tech groups out in Arizona that are doing fantastic things for the community where they're doing projects together. Now I know there's different ones all over, but I literally off the top of my head, I'm thinking about some of my students who help out at a group out there. And local tech groups are absolutely key. You might not always find them on Eventbrite or Meetup, but if you do some searching and Googling, look for local groups in your area. Third thing, look for Facebook groups, all right? There are different, uh, what would you say, industry leaders, who have different Facebook groups or there are general Facebook groups, places where you can go and network with people who all work on say JavaScript or Python, whatever you might be working with. There are also places that have memberships. So much like Coding Career Fastlane, you could join the Simple Programmer membership. There's lots of different membership places to join and actually interact with people and grow a network and tap into existing networks. Now, the fifth thing, open source projects. Uh, back in the day, I was, uh, I was, very, I was working with um, some of the Angular people and Node people. I don't do hardly any of that anymore, but that was a great way for me very beginning of my career to get integrated into what I was using 
was to do a couple tickets for them, help them out, show up at the conferences, stay late, talk to the developers, talk to the people on the core committee. Open source projects are a great place to find like-minded people that you can interact with. And yes, give some time for free, but a dividend will pay in the future when your network grows. Last but not least, join a boot camp if you, well, if we're in the beginning part of the learning phase, join a boot camp. They have really great networks for you to tap into, career services departments generally. And if they don't, well, check out the Code and Career Fastlane because I help out with all that, not boot camp wise, but in the sense of you need help with the career or the networking, Code and Career Fastlane. Um, so, networking. Overall, I'm going to wrap back around to the beginning point of you are a strong developer as your network. And I stand behind that because when you grow to that ceiling, there's no way to grow past it when you have nothing to look up towards, when you have no content, when you have no mentors, when you have no coaches, you will have a ceiling. And that, well, you might not even know it's there, but I'm telling you right now, if you have a strong network, you will know what the ceiling looks like. And if you don't, then I'm going to encourage you to get a bigger and better network. If you want to help with that? Let me know. Message me and uh, we can talk on that. Third obstacle people will face in learning coding, the imposter syndrome. Now, the imposter syndrome affects us all in various degrees, and really some of us can hinder, it can really hinder us from learning, or for others, it can even stop them dead in their tracks from not even trying coding at all anymore. It's a very vicious problem that everyone's going to experience. And to the extent, like I was saying, it will vary. Now, what are you going to feel when you feel this? Like, what, what does this look like? What does this imposter syndrome look like when you're learning? Well, it's going to look like this. You're going to have a fear of failure, right? You're going to want to go hide, go dark, skip classes, not answer emails, not show up, maybe procrastinate. You're going to have some self-doubt in there. Uh, maybe, better yet, you'll be hesitating or feeling uncertain and not acting and you know, being your own worst critic and paralyzing yourself because you're going to destroy what's in front of you by hiding or going dark again. Now, you also might feel some anxiety, right? You might feel like a fraud. You might feel like you don't belong, which will entail lack uh, self-confidence for yourself. So that's kind of what it's going to feel like. And that's what it looks like. And it's going to happen to everybody in some form. Now, those are obviously shorter feelings. Like I have a longer list. But I don't want to make this whole video about the imposter syndrome. I can I can do that in the future. But those are some of the things you feel. So let me give you some quick wins on this obstacle and how to get around it because you're going to feel it. Uh, first and foremost, there's a really good quote from Mel Robbins that I'm going to give you that it really hit home with me when I heard this a couple years back. But I think it's really clutch. And that is, if you have a problem that can be solved with an action, then you don't have a problem at all. That's a simple what you can do because that's a simple mind change in the sense of if I have a problem that can be taken with an action, when you look at your problems, if there are actions being able to take, you don't have a problem at all. You don't have to worry about the imposter syndrome, but that's that's a minute point. I really want to make sure that quote's out there because if it hits home for you, it, it definitely hit home for me when I read it or heard it. Um, a quick win you can do with the imposter syndrome to get around this obstacle is especially when you're feeling overwhelmed, you can do what's called a brain dump or you can write down a to-do list when the imposter syndrome is overwhelming you. Now, I'm going to talk more about a brain dump, I think, in the next video more, but I'll give you a synopsis here. It's like you take a log, you log out everything that happens, and then you go look at the logs and say, why did this fail? And you start looking, and so brain dump is you write down everything, much like a log's. The second option there is the to-do list. Literally write it down, get it all out. Now, if you're feeling tired from the imposter syndrome, and I encourage you then to do chunking or baby steps. Literally, much like when you pseudocode, you pseudocode every little line out and every little baby step to the function names, to the variables, you chunk it down into small baby steps. And if you find yourself with the imposter syndrome saying, I'm gonna do it later, I'll encourage you then to pick a date, pick a time, Hold yourself to it. Now, something else I would encourage is, if you've heard some of my other videos, you know this, also a social challenge. Tell someone on your Facebook network or tell your whole network 
someone that will socially hold you accountable. All right. And last, well, actually, last two, if you are feeling uncertain from the imposter syndrome about what you're doing or what not to do, two things. Pick it best, pick it random, or have someone help you pick the best value. I get that when it's uncertain, it's it's harder, right? But just getting a decision done is probably the most influential thing there. And last but not least, when you feel like the imposter syndrome is creeping in, take a really good look at your body language and what you're doing. Now, I know there was a Harvard study a couple of years ago, and it was kind of like it was really done not that great. They didn't have enough statistics. They did it one time. It wasn't good. So I'm not talking about that. For those of you who heard that, I'm not talking about that study at all. But the idea of what your body language is will tell you a lot in the sense of you're feeling this and you notice yourself, you're all closed in, you're fiddling with your hands, you're all worried. It's going to be a really good indicator to what's going on up here. And until you know what's going on or you see this or you understand what your body language is doing, until you understand it, you can't fix it. So we have to see it. Once we see it and we know, and you even hear me now saying body language, what's your body language right now and fixing it. Now I can do another video on it if you're interested about actually how to fix your body language, but I'll leave it at this. If you're going to fix your body language, put it, your body language in a stance or a, let me ask, put it like this. What would a confident developer look like? And that's what I want you to act as if, and take that body language and use that to fix it. Now, in summary, right, there are three main options you're going to hit. You're going to hit debugging problems, you're going to hit networking problems, and you're going to hit imposter syndrome obstacles. These three you will face in learning to code throughout your entire process. And better yet, throughout your entire career, you're going to learn to hit those, especially when the problems get tougher, when you potentially move jobs or move areas, and when you're doing new things, the imposter syndrome will always creep back. So take what I gave you today. Try it out for yourself. Write it down so you can replicate it in the future. And if you feel like you really you would like some help accelerating your coding career around these three obstacles, then I encourage you to sign up below, hit the link. It's a service that I built to accelerate your career, whether you're in the beginning or you're advanced. And I show you and help you build a plan so you can join the coding career fast lane. And especially help out with what we were talking about today. I gave you some actual items to take away today, but there's there's so many more things we can do and we can customize it to you. That's it for this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Check out the Coding Career Fastlane, and I will see you in the next video.